Hi everybody, welcome to Speedway Motors. My name's Tim, I'm always so glad when you can join me here in the shop and we can talk about some of the great parts available to you. In this case, I wanna talk about some of the great tools that we have available that'll make your life easier. I'm a do-it-yourselfer at home. I'm working on my hot rod in a little two-car garage and I rely on only myself to learn how to put this thing together. I'm gonna to be honest, I've never bent hard line before or flared it, so I had a little bit of an education over the past few weeks. I've talked about it a lot, but actually doing it yourself is a real education. So I wanted to bring some of the pieces that I've been working on and also some of the tools that I picked up right here at Speedway that have helped me out a bunch. And I'm going to show you how they work. I'm going to demonstrate them here today. And I'm going to do a two video uh, series. First on bending and cutting line, but then also on a really great flaring tool that we have that gives me perfect flares every time. There's nothing worse than wondering if all the hard work you did on a flare is actually going to hold and seal up. So uh, this tool is dynamite. I can't wait to show it to you. First, I want to talk a little bit about bending and cutting hard line. I'm working not only on my brake lines, but on my fuel system as well on my hot rod. So I brought some 3 16 brake line that I'll show you here in just a second and a wonderful tool for bending it. And then I brought a straight piece of fuel line uh, that I just picked up from the local parts store uh, that I'm going to cut the end off of, but most importantly, bend it. Uh, to fit the profile of my engine. I'm working on a little 241 early Hemi and uh, this thing doesn't have a, a racing fuel system at all. It just has the original uh, mechanical fuel pump. But instead of going to the single two barrel carburetor that would have been stock on the engine, I have an Edmunds intake with two two barrels up there now. So I need to be able to plumb this a little bit further. And I'll show you how that works. Um, I brought the original fuel line off the car, which is banged up. You know, this is from 1954, so it's seen its better days uh, to kind of help me out uh, with some of the bends. But then another piece that I bent up at home uh, that I was doing just for practice uh, that has all the right bends is just not quite long enough. So we'll work through all of that. I'll talk a little bit about the tools that I'm going to use here in just a second when I demonstrate them to you. Uh, I just have a basic uh, tool here to cut the, to, to cut the line, uh, and this is a pretty handy tool. This thing cuts all the way from 3 16 up to inch and an eighth, so you can do your plumbing at home with this uh, devil, and it's got a really wonderful deburring tool on it too. I'll show you how that works. Actually, my favorite little cutter for brake line is this little pip squeak that I picked up at my local hardware store. Uh, it's just a really handy little cutter. It so works a little slower, but I find it gives me a better cut uh, so I don't have to do as much deburring and sanding later when I go on to do my flares. More importantly, the main uh, tool that I wanted to show you uh, is actually two pieces. Uh, one is this uh, brake line uh, bender from Rigid. This is a wonderful piece uh, right off our shelf. This thing uh, will give you up to 180 degree bends uh, and it's made specifically for 3 16 brake line. So it's really wonderful. It's got a nice little latch, keeps the tubing in there tight and when you bend it around it makes a nice tight bend. Uh, you know, you're looking at only an inch apart if you need it uh, on your tubing if you do a 180 degree bend. And then there's another rigid tool. Uh, this is a great one if you just want to buy one tool that, that will handle everything. This actually uh, has three grooves in it so you can do, you know, brake line. You can also do 5 16 and quarter inch tubing in this devil. This one's nice. It'll give you a little less uh, wider bend on your tubing. That's the only reason I like the other one better for brake line. And I'll show you these in, in just a second uh, and we'll put them to work and see if we can't build a little fuel line for my, for my little hot rod engine. So let's go to the bench and, and we'll see if we can't make this stuff uh, do its job and, and I'll show you that they're, they're worth the effort and worth uh, picking up. So hang with me. I'll get my tubing over here and we'll, we'll get started. Okay everybody, here I am. I'm at my bench and it's a little bit of a disaster area. I've got a lot of stuff going on. I've got my two tools that we just talked about. I've got some fuel line that we're going to bend up in just a second for my old hot rod engine and then I've got some brake line too. I'm going to start with the brake line and bending it uh, to show you uh, the tool I like best for 3 16 line uh, which is this little guy I just mentioned. Uh, we'll bend this up to try to emulate a line that I needed on my car. This is actually the line that goes up on the front cross member. It hooks to a, a T on this side and then this uh, hooks to the fitting that goes out to the flexible line hooking to the, the Lincoln style brakes. Uh, so we'll bend up a line that, that kind of emulates this and I'll just kind of show you how nice this tool is to work with. I actually took this piece off of 
some line like you'd get it from Speedway Motors. This is steel brake line and it comes in a big roll and you can get it in different lengths depending upon how much brake line you need. One thing I'll warn you about this is as you get it out and you bend it, be careful not to bend any kind of steel line more than it needs to be bent. It actually work hardens and then it cracks or it's more likely to crack once, uh, once the steel gets harder. So uh, as you straighten this out, you know, use a nice flat bench to, to use as a guide and uh, don't bend it back and forth. That's very important. Of course, many of you out there already know that, but it's probably worth mentioning again. I'll show you this tubing uh, piece that I cut off. I've already straightened it. Uh, it's just like if you've ever straightened a paper clip, you know, you get steel off of a reel like that. Uh, you just got to be patient and, uh, and use your eye. It'll tell you when you get it nice and straight uh, to get started. This one doesn't have any flares on it on either end and you can do that later. I'll show you in the next video with our cool flaring tool. Uh, and I've got the fittings here. It's important to remember if you buy a piece of uh, brake line from your local parts store that already has the flares on it, make sure you're mindful of where your fittings are. I can't tell you how many times people have <laughs> had their fittings uh, and then they've done their bends and their fittings get locked into the wrong spot. You know, they, they have to either cut it off or start all over. Uh, so be mindful of that. You know, keep, keep your fittings on each end of your line if you have a, a piece that's already flared before you start bending it. Um, I know that from experience. I can't tell you how many times I've goofed that up. So we're going to worry about our fittings later and we're just going to bend this uh, piece of tubing up. One of the cool tricks that I've found from people that bend line a lot is they'll sometimes use wire, uh, you know, about the same gauge wire as what a coat hanger would be, and they'll actually bend the route of their, uh, their brake line with the wire. And that's a really good way to be able to measure, you know, how long of a piece of tube you need to start with. Uh, because that's a factor too. As you start bending this stuff, you know, it, it, may, it becomes more complicated to know just how long of a piece it needs to be. So that's a really great way to judge that. You can, you can use the wire to straighten it back out, measure it, and then you're good to go. It's a lot more accurate. I'm going to start with this really great tool that we have uh, that I talked about a second ago. This gets a nice tight radius and this is my favorite tool that I've found that we carry for bending brake line. Um, I'm going to try to emulate this little piece. I'll just kind of show you just how easy it is to use. So basically what I'm trying to do is make a line that, that looks a lot like this guy. So I've got my first bend in there and sometimes when I'm making bends I'll mark where I want the bend to start either with a sharpie marker or a pencil and then I'll create a line where the bend actually needs to be so I can straighten it in the tool because that's really important as you start bending these. Of course you can fix them by hand somewhat but uh, again if you can just bend it once and be done that's great. So there's a little zero on this dial which is helpful. I try to line my little mark that I made where I want the bend to start with the mark on the zero and then you got your clamp down and you can just make that bend. Of course it's always good to know how much of a bend. I'm just putting a little jog in this particular line and it really doesn't take much force. And before you know it, there you have it. You've got your, your nice little jog in the line and that's great for jumping out away from the cross member. And you can see I, I straighten that out a little bit by hand to get it nice and flat and there's no problem with that. So if I'm trying to create a line like this, I'm going to start marking it for where I want my bends to start. I'm going to create this little jog here. So again, I'll, I'll mark it and I'll also mark a line where the angle is for it to kick out two if that makes any sense. So we'll go back to our tool, put the latch down, line it up with zero again. And here I'm just putting a little, and I almost goofed up as you can see just how easy it is to do that. I actually need this to bend the other direction. So I'm going to put it like this. There we go. Now we're, now we're cooking with gas. You see just how easy it is to make a mistake, make a bend go the wrong way. <laughs> Again, I am not a professional, but I sure have a lot of fun doing this kind of stuff. 
And there is nothing more satisfying than doing a hot rod job yourself. I'm going to keep creating that little jog to get around the U-bolts in my cross member. And because this tool is so wonderful, you can get nice tight, nice tight bends that are very accurate. I'll keep working my way around. Whoops, keep banging on stuff here, but we'll get her done. Kind of use my other one as a guide. I think I'm kind of free forming this thing, not being real scientific, but you get the idea. Swing this around. extra forming by hand there and, and there you go I mean it's a really nice really nice way to to get your your tubing bent uh, I kind of show you on this tool how this particular one would bend and it works the same way I just uh, grab the the narrowest channel here for my brake line and I'll show you how this one puts a bend in that's about the tightest bends you can get in that. So you can kind of see the difference between the second tool and the first tool. So depending upon what works best for you, that kind of gives you a little idea of the difference. So we'll kind of move all the brake stuff over and my wonderful brake tubing bending tool here. And we'll move on to fuel line. And I'll kind of show you a little bit about bending up this fuel line for my hot rod. And I'm going to do the same, it's the same principle. Of course, this is a purchase line, so it already has the flare on one end. I'm just going to leave that be. I'm going to use that factory-made flare. It looks beautiful. So no sense to cut that off if I don't need to. And I'm going to start trying to create this line with my big bending tool. So I'm going to make this curve first. We'll get this guy in here and we'll start going to work. I want this one to be really tight, as tight as I can. And you can even put the fitting, I wouldn't put it on the threads as you pull this around, but you could put it on the, on the uh, hex part of the fitting. That's not going to hurt anything to make your first bend. And you can see this one's really tight. It's not quite 180 degrees, but it's a little over 90. And there it goes. Make sure I get that about the same, because I know this other tube actually fits my hot rod. So I'm going to kind of make sure I do the same thing here. There you have it. There's that first bend. Just like magic. And look at that. There's no deformed tube. It's not kinked. It's really nice. And of course, what I was telling you earlier about your fittings, once you make a bend, it's <laughs> your fitting stuck there. So be careful for that. I'm telling you, if I can do this, anybody can. So I'm going to move on to my second bend. And I can see that bend because I need that to be pretty precise. I'm going to mark where that bend needs to start with my Sharpie marker. That devil starts right about there. And as far as angle goes, it's kicked off to the side a little bit. Not much, but not quite in the same line as my first bend. It's really nice to have a guide. You can freeform this too, obviously, um, if you have a total custom application. So this one comes around and it bends the other way. So I always have to kind of think about that. Here we go. I'll put my line right where I need that bend to start. Of course, get it in the right channel. That's very important. And then I'll give it that 
next bend, and that's a looks like it's a 90 degree bend. So there we have it, just like that. That should all match up. Yeah, pretty good. A little bit tighter than the last one, or the first one rather, but I think I can still make that work. This particular piece goes around the fuel pump where it goes into the engine, so if I make it a little bit bigger, that's okay. It's not rocket science. So the next bend, I'll just mark it again. It's to happen right about here to here. And I like putting my line to the inside of the bend so I know exactly what angle to bend it. Then I always know that goes face down into the, the bender too, which is cool. Again, we start that first line right on the zero of the bender. And then that one's again, that's almost a 90 on that devil, so I'm going to pull it a little bit tighter. Make sure that first line's lined up so I get it just right. And then I'll give it my little bend. And there she goes. Just that easy. And if it's a little bit too much, you can gently use your fingers and, and bend it back. Yeah, I'm liking that. I'm going to take a little bit of that bend out. Yeah, good. So my next bend needs to be right about here. This one, of course, starts bending here, ends up about here. This one's a little bit different in the way it jogs over a little bit. I need this bend to happen right here. And I'm just making my little marks just as a reference. Again, you may find a way that works best for you. You see that little line that I made? Again, it's pretty straightforward. Notice I'm keeping my other fitting way up here. <laughs> Don't want to get that thing down here and get in my way. Get this guy lined up in its channel. Get the line right. If I'm right, when I get home, I'll put this on my car, and holy cow, it'll line right up with my low pressure regulator, and I'll be in business. Give this guy a little bend. I'm going to double check and make sure. Yeah, this one isn't quite as dramatic of a bend, so I'm going to be a little more careful on this one. Not quite go as crazy, not quite a 90. And I've got my other piece there that I can use as a guide. Yeah, we're looking good. Oops. See how soft this stuff is. You, you can make it look pretty ugly pretty quickly, so be careful with that. I'm just imagining this thing sitting on my fuel pump. Yeah, that's about right. I need to take a little bit of bend out of this. Just a little bit. There we go. He's looking good. Okay, so now we move on to the next bend, which this is an easy one. It's just a 90, and it starts right about here. Goes to here. And my line happens right here. So I'm going to put my straight line on there. Kind of line up in my tool. And we'll make another one. The line's nice because <laughs> if you get twisted around on which direction it's supposed to point, you can see how easy that happens. You can, uh, you can get things fixed right away. So I'm going to make sure I'm going the right direction on this guy. Yep, I think we're good. And again, this is about a 90. I'm going to turn this a little bit. There we have it. As long as it doesn't slip, we'll be good. So there's my last, second to last 90 degree bend. Yeah, looking nice. I like it. 
And guys, I couldn't do this right out of the chute. It took me a little bit of, little bit of time to, to learn exactly what I was doing. So now we've got that all figured out. Now I just have one more 90 degree bend in this guy. And we're gonna be, we're gonna be set. So my last 90 degree bend happens right over here. So I'm gonna mark where it starts, mark where it ends, and then mark where I want that inside bend to happen to keep the line straight. And we're in good shape. I have actually seen some folks put a vice grip down on, on these pieces of tubing to make sure that they don't move once you start bending them. And I guess you can do that, but I think if you're careful, you'll be just fine. There's my last 90, perfect. All right, I'm feeling pretty pumped. Here I have it, my, uh, my hard line for my hot rod. Now, one thing I have to do, obviously this line is quite a bit longer and I've got a little bit of an angle issue on this one, but I can fix that real easy. Basically, this just needs to twist a little. That's perfect. Not too much, but basically now I just need to decide how long I need this guy to be. We'll cut that. It actually needs to be right about there to be perfect on my hot rod. You always add a quarter of an inch for the flare uh, because it pushes your tubing in, obviously. We'll talk about that in a second. Okay, guys, well, there you have it. I'm feeling pretty good about this fuel line. I'm excited to get home tonight and bolt this up on my hot rod. It just gets me one step closer to driving that old pile down the road, so I'm pumped. I am not an expert. I hope what I was able to show you here is that a, a rookie, even like me, with the right tools can do the job easily and have a really nice professional looking result. I mean, if the boys in 1955 uh, you know, bent this up and mine holds its own next to, to their work, I'm feeling pretty good about life. So again, it, it's a great investment to have the right tools, but as you get started, if you have any questions, give us a call. We've got a great group of tech people on the phones. You can message us right here on Facebook or visit our website where we can answer your questions too. It's just important to us that we get more old cars out on the street. And if you can do it yourself in a two car garage like me, makes you feel pretty excellent. So until next time, folks, I hope you visit, visit us again. I'll be back with a video about flaring. So check that one out too. And until next time, we'll catch you later.